What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Know Your Balls, presented by Latinique, as usual. As a reminder, once again, we have our new upload schedule. Episodes drop in every Monday and Friday. I am one of your hosts, Jack Manis, coming to you from Portland. And as usual, I'm here with my good pal, Robbie Williams. How you doing, bud? Hey, I'm ready to... Uh talk about some crazy stuff in the world wide world of uh what sports balls sport balls you said you sound like you know exactly what we're thing, doing and then i stopped and went for the other and then it just turned yeah. into sport balls ball sports sports with balls in them Got yeah, ball. I, I it's like uh you were saying to me literally two minutes ago just say it with confidence you know yeah even if <laughs> You just, whatever you say, just say just it with pick confidence. one and stick with it, even if it doesn't make any sense. Right, right. Yeah, that, that works. That'll work. I blame it on right. the mosquitoes attacking me right now. You're yeah. inside. Well, that doesn't mean there can't be a mosquito in, inside. Yeah. You know, my life. dog brings them in, and he, and here they are. Yikes. In front of me. You might see them at some point. I, I hope I do. They're they're not really prominent in my neck of the woods, thank well, goodness. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Very prominent in my neck of the woods. Yeah. All right. So per usual, Robbie. Of, uh, oh. Max. Tom What's Brady. <laughs> he has yeah. one. He has yes. a Max. He does indeed. <laughs> well, we'll 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 get to Tom Brady because we got some NFL stuff to discuss. And that includes our boy TB12. Well, I don't know about our boy. Certainly not yours. I know you're probably not the biggest topic. I don't like him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put that on me. So, so the universe's boy, Tom Brady, will be discussed. We'll talk about America's game, baseball as well. Got to make sure we hit on baseball. We also got some NBA stuff. Obviously, NBA Finals is a series. The home team lost, but America is still losing because we don't get a goes yet. But we'll discuss all that. But let's start from the top. Let's go, let's go to some NFL stuff and your, your long-lost lover, Tom Brady, your favorite boy. So okay, All I said was he has a neck. That's all I had to say <laughs> about him. That's like the best thing you're going to get from me. He has a neck. Yeah. Well, it's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So <laughs> this week it came out that my guy had a torn MCL. And his left knee, that an injury he sustained his final season with the Pats. And the Bucks, you know, they just decided, I guess, not to put it on a single injury report the entire season. Now, that that could spell trouble for the Bucks. I don't know what the NFL is going to do in terms of handing down any penalties or anything like that. There's a wider array of things that could happen. Where do you think this kind of goes? Where do you think this is headed? Do you think anything? I, I think it's a big lie just to like hype up Tom Brady more and just make him seem cooler. I think they just made it all up. That's why they didn't disclose the injury because there really wasn't an injury. And they're just going to say there's an injury to be like, oh, you thought Tom Brady was a god. Nope. He's bigger than a god. He's, I don't know what's bigger than a god, but tom brady that's it it's like god and then tom brady and he's his own like you have to capitalize it no matter i mean you already do have to capitalize it but like the whole name you know <laughs> but like tom brady in all caps every single right. letter one word no space because i mean uh, come on like why like how is he injured he wasn't injured he played the whole freaking year I don't care what oh you have seals. It's fine, apparently. He's played he won the Super Bowl. So whatever it is, you know, it's like getting your gallbladder removed. You don't need it, apparently. I don't think you I think you like if they go if they come down like I hate Tom Brady. And if they come down on Tom Brady with some type of like eh, you didn't tell us that you like were technically injured, even though your injury does not like inhibit you at all. So like is it really an injury? Like, and then they come down on with like fines or a suspension or like, I mean, is this really being talked about? I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, I, there are a couple of things for me that, that come to mind when I think about this one is like, well, fuck, if, if you're playing against Tom Brady, 
in this division. And he really did have a torn MCL and he still rolled through the league pretty handedly. Then you might be in trouble again, which sucks. Um, is he again? He's in his forties at this point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's like in his mid forties, but but also the thing is, like, there have been other players that have been injured and haven't been listed on the report. And, like, the NFL, in its rules, has the ability to suspend players, to, like, uh, take away draft picks for teams and stuff like that. But I think in the past, all they've done is hand down fines of, like, a couple hundred grand or something. Like, it's not going to be anything substantial yeah. And I don't think it's a big deal anyway. It'll like, be about as substantial as his injury was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah. How did this yeah. come out? Like where where did this did this come from, by the way? Like I, I think he said it like in some interview during training camp or something. Oh, he just let it slip, didn't think about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's losing it, man. That's sign number one that yeah, he's starting to lose it. He can't even keep his, his word straight. Next thing you know, yeah. he's going to be driving down the road and his muffler is going to be dragging. He's going to be looking over the steering wheel like this. And they'll be like, how did Tom Brady get so short? I don't know. He yeah, he's, he's getting old, man. It's going to like it's going to get to the point where like his like supermodel wife is going to walk down into the kitchen in the middle of the night. And Tom Brady is just going to be staring at the inside of the oven naked, not knowing where he's at. That's my prediction for for 20. 20- for 2021 22 tom brady it's it's all downhill from here and it it's all this, this knee entry is the catalyst of the beginning of the end for for our sweet sweet boy tb12 yeah, it just proves that he's not human and he's just going to keep playing forever like he just doesn't need his mcl he just wins the super bowl see, no big deal. see now you sound like the biggest tom brady fan out there you know, it's hard to hate on a guy when all the facts are just against you. Like, I have no facts on my side. I got no stats to show you as to why you should hate Tom Brady. Yeah, I just uh, – It's more know. a thing of – it's per, it's a pride thing at this point. It's just, it's just like watching the same episode of a TV show over and over and over and over again. You know, that's, that's what it is for me at this point. You know, I didn't start off hating Tom Brady, but it's been 20 something years now. 21, right? He won his first Super Bowl over in it. 2001. You're over it. So tw- yeah, I'm over it. I'm over it. Like, good for him. You know, Make room Turn for the, the next to come to, to take over the, the eight o'clock time slot. You know, like, yeah, you can't, you well, can't we just have, make the office forever. You can't just infinitely make Harry Potter. You can't just infinitely do Game of Thrones. You know, like, it has to end. Right. And, and whenever it, it, he decides that it, then I, you know, I'll start being a big Tom Brady fan, honestly. Yeah, for all he's done for the game. Well, speak, yeah. speaking of people on their way out, Ted Ginn Jr. I mean, mm-hmm. what? <laughs> R.I.P. Ted Ginn Jr.'s illustrious career. Uh, he, he's gone. I mean, 14 year vet. 14 year vet. 412 receptions. 5,742 receiving yards. About 14 yards of catch and 33 touchdowns. He he was. Pretty efficient. I mean, he he was your he was your burner receiver, right? So like, he was kind of a one trick pony, but he was fun to watch, man. He was fun to yeah. watch. Then he made his way around Miami, San Francisco, Carolina, Arizona, New Orleans, Chicago. He yeah, did, he did all right. He had he had like a, you know, he's he's not like an amazing NFL player, but you know, I think most NFL fans fans, if you say. Ted Ginn's name, they you know, they know who you're talking about. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, uh, he's that he's guy. on my he's on my waiver wire in my fantasy yeah. league. Yeah, oh, like he comes and goes. Sometimes you pick him up depending on the matchup, you know, because you know yeah. it could happen. But like, probably not. But like, you know, enough. But he does it enough where you're like, all right, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he did he's it enough to be a fourteen. You know, he's a great guy. Fourteen years for a receiver is is pretty good. Well, you know. You know? And enough teams appreciated what he offered. I mean, he was on, you know, a third of the league, you know, in terms of number of teams. So he obviously had a lot to offer. So, you know, what's 
let's give give some snaps for Ted Ginn, you know, let him ride off into the sunset. And and congrats. I'd rather for- see Ted Ted Ginn come back next year than than Tom Brady. That's 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 how I'm gonna end the NFL segment today. But only only if Ted Ginn plays quarterback for the Bucks. It has to be a fair swap. Like it has yes. to be a one for one swap. Yes. Yeah. That would be even Which, better. This yeah, Tampa Bay yeah. with all the championships over there, it's just enough is enough. Yeah, I don't I don't know what it is, man. Like like Fl- Florida sports stuff to me is like besides like baseball kind of i don't know they don't even show up to their own baseball teams games down there in florida I, I don't like seeing florida win anything i don't know if it's like a personal thing and i don't know why it's become a personal thing but florida needs to change my mind quick because like i'm going straight down the path of like i hope they never win I anything mean, for no reason literally like geographically and culturally like the opposite of oregon i feel like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i mean if True. you just look at the corners True. of the united states so like it makes sense that you just have this terrible uh aversion to to florida like the whole peninsula there um yeah i just it's just like why why do they get to win it i don't know i have no reason i don't know it's Literally. just tampa it's not really florida it's just tampa bay yeah tampa bay it's just like it's like know, the just... worst part of florida i don't know if like you've ever been to florida but like there's a lot of trailer parks around Tampa Bay. Um, it's that's all I'll say about that area of Florida. Like I just don't understand it. I don't understand the Florida thing. But you know, I digress on it. <laughs> My uncalled for Florida rants that I have no reason to have gone on. But you know, a lot of people hate things for no reason. Apparently, uh, like this fan at the Yankees game who decided to chuck a ball at Alex Verdugo in the middle of the game. Uh, did you see this? No, I did not see this. Okay, so Verdugo's left fielder, uh, the Red Sox, Boston Red Sox, and he spots the Red Sox fan out in the bleachers and caught a ball. I think it was like, yeah, it was like between innings or whatever. He caught a fly ball and he tried to toss it out to a Red Sox fan. And this Yankees fan caught it and threw it back at Verdugo and it hit him in the back. Oh. Like, and, and I mean, Verdugo was talking shit to the fan. Like, it got bad. Like, the first base coach had to come out and, like, take Verdugo off the field. And, like, it got, it got weird. Aaron Boone, the manager of the Yankees, was calling for the fan to get thrown in jail, which is a little much. Like, it's it's the Yankees-Boston rivalry. Like, come on. Chill out. Yeah. But, but so the fan now has been banned from attending any any game at any park for the rest of his life. Wow. I mean, yeah, like, I've seen fans, like, throw the ball back into the field before, but I've never seen someone hit, you know, the opposing player with the ball. Are we sure that, like, the fan, like, I mean, we're giving him a lot of credit for being accurate with his throw and actually hitting the guy is it possible that he was just drunk and threw the ball wildly back onto the field and just happened to hit the guy and like throwing the ball back onto the field is a totally normal thing in baseball i've seen it many times i mean you know you know i think it's probably a mix of the two i think the fan probably was super drunk and intentionally threw the ball to hit Verdugo. like he wasn't consciously it just took over like i'm gonna hit this guy even though i don't want to uh, like, I think he like, wanted to, for sure. I think he like, wanted to, yeah, for like, sure. Yeah, like, subconsciously wanted to, and then it guided his his hand. Yeah, yeah. I Actually I mean, doing it. <laughs> it's the heat of the rivalry. Like, I don't know. And then he, immediately he, afterwards, he was probably like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, no, yeah. He, like, sat, not his idea. He, he sat down in the bleachers, and all the – it was cool to see, like, all the Yankees fans were, like, pointing him out to security to get him out of the stadium. Because, like, dude, that's uncalled for. Like, you don't do that, like – if it hits for Dugo in the head, like, and he has some mustard on it, like that could actually injure a player. Like that's not cool. So like, I think they, the, I mean, the, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, Major League Baseball acted pretty swiftly on this one, which I, which I think was a good thing to do. So that, that was fun. Fans in all sports are getting weird. It happened in basketball this season in the playoffs and 
I think people just don't know what to do with their extremities now that they're like in I mean, person. Stuff like this has been happening in sports for a long time, though. I mean, there's there's a there was a hockey game. I think it was a playoff game in the 90s where like somebody actually threw a puck onto the ice like and threw it like right next to the other puck. And like even on the instant replay, they couldn't tell like which puck was which. And one of them went in the net. And so they counted it as a goal because like somebody actually was making a totally legally legal play and a fan just happened to throw the puck like perfectly in there. And they could yeah. never figure out if it was the fans puck or the, you know, actually, you know, the, I don't know, the, the in-game puck, you know, that went into the net. But they knew one went into the net and they gave him the goal. But well, like, see, there's met, there's tons of instances. I mean, you got the 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 Chicago Cubs fan who got death threats because he oh, caught yeah. that that foul ball. Um, you know, you got the the band on the field with with uh, the I think it was the Steelers, right? Or no, no, it was college. Yeah, it was it was a cal it was it was no it was a cal cal stanford game cal stanford okay yeah yeah get my clothes yeah. mixed up but anyways you know <laughs> this is like fans have been you know doing crazy stuff and running on the field and throwing things on the, i mean it's a tradition in detroit to throw octopi onto the ice and you'll still you get thrown out of the stadium, you know. You get like in trouble. You get like a fine or something. I had a boss one time who was in the newspaper for doing it, um, <laughs> and he had his newspaper proudly hung in in his pizza. Store. I I think though, like you can distinguish those things, like from this whole Verdugo incident, in that this fan hit the player intentionally. Like that's a different. Detroit fan one time threw a quarter at Allen Iverson and hit him in the head. Couldn't believe the accuracy with a quarter from 10 rows back. And think about how quick Allen Iverson is. You know, you shouldn't throw a quarter at a guy, but let's just, like, objectively take a step back and be like, how hard is it, though, to nail someone in the head with a quarter from 100 feet away while they're playing a professional basketball yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that. Imp- impressiveness aside, I think it's good that they're clamping down on that stuff. Oh, because, yeah, like, I mean, it's screw it's those guys. But, you know, it's nothing new. And let's be honest, you know, it's like, you know, I think NASCAR fans don't really want, like, wrecks to happen where people get, like, seriously injured. But also, like, if a wreck happens, like, you know, they might perk up a little bit and, like, you know, turn the volume up after watching, like, 300 left oh. turns with no action in a row, you know? I was going to say, man, we, we better we better start moving on because if we're going to go start talking about NASCAR, <laughs> it's just, like, I can't. I can't do it. I can't. Although I, I am a big Formula One fan, so maybe we can touch on that in, in a different episode. Yeah. But yeah. All right. More baseball stuff. Trade deadline happening in 12 days. I think 10 a.m. Pacific time, July 30th, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, MLB trade deadline. Are, are are you hearing anything in, in your infinite you know, pool of baseball wisdom that you've accrued? I'm, I'm sure you just have you just have all of the hottest takes on on who's going where, who's buying, who's selling. I'm sure you're all about it. Um, you know, I, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot going on. There's <laughs> just so much. Yeah. Too many things come to mind at once. Yeah. Um, well, that's okay. That's okay. You know, I, I I can take care of it for you if that's okay. I know you have so much that you want to say, but I think I can take the words right out of your mouth on this one. So. Sure. So, so let's do that. So trade deadline, there, there's there been some, some chatter about some big moves. Um, some that are borderline ridiculous. I was hearing that the Yankees might think about trading Aaron Judge, which is so beyond stupid. And I heard this on the ESPN telecast on the game. So it's just, it, he's not a free agent until the end of next season. And he's your biggest player. And like, you're not in such sell mode where that's ever going to need to happen. So that that won't happen. There are plenty more options out there uh, that I think could happen. Uh, Starling Marte, for example, an outfielder from the Miami Marlins. He's been in contract negotiations with them for a while. The guy's hitting 287. I think he has like seven home runs, but 20 stolen bases, two-time gold glover, good player. Um, there are a lot of teams in on him right now. You can see him moved. Uh, Byron Buxton of the Twins. Uh Big upside, uh, 40-40 possible guy if he can ever stay healthy. 
Um, I know the Phillies are are pretty pretty hot on on trying to get him over there. I don't know that that'll happen either. Um, I know Buxton's looking to looking to stay in Minnesota and maybe get a contract extension. We'll see what happens there. Uh, the Yankees have always liked Joey Gallo, a big power bat. They need more left-handed bats. That's something we can see as well. Um, there, there's a lot going on, man. You're gonna you're gonna see a lot of small moves. I, I'd be interested in in seeing what teams are selling and what you're buying. I know the team that is for sure going to be sellers are the Arizona Diamondbacks because they are historically awful right now. Um, so that could be something that you see a lot of movement around. Um, but my angels do literally anything for pitching, literally anything for pitching would be nice. It just something, something would be nice. Um, but yeah, man, there, there's some stuff happening. I, I can see the look on your face of pure joy and interest and, and digging deep into hey, MLB. I was, I was deadline, watching so. the uh, Boston, uh, you know, Yankees game before we started this podcast. The Yankees are obliterating Boston last time I checked. Um, yep. And, yep. you know, I, you know, I, I had to set an alarm before uh, the podcast started, honestly, just to wake me back up from uh, oh, God. how exciting that game was while they were well, down, you know. I yeah, it's like seven to two now, something like that. That's not that bad. Well, Somebody another thing that I like twenty four is like twenty four to eight. I can't yeah, remember my, San, my San Diego Padres. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It looks like a um, football game. So one more piece I want to hit on here is that for the last couple of seasons, the Chicago Cubs have been a team that's like, what the fuck are they going to do? Because they have Anthony Rizzo, who they could extend. They have Javi Baez, who has been one of their most exciting players for a while now there's they're i mean such high potential on that guy he could walk they have chris bryant former mvp rookie of the year world series champion basically they, they have craig kimbrell too who's been who's has a 2022 club option he's been one of the best closers in the league this season they have a lot of trade pieces and right now it's looking like it's looking like they're going to keep rizzo and baez and they're shopping bryant Kimbrel. A lot of teams could use a bullpen arm like Kimbrel, and who wouldn't want former MVP Chris Bryant? He's a great glove, great bat. He can play anywhere on the field. So we'll see what happens there. That's definitely going to be a team that has a lot of big decisions to make, and it's going to be happening in the next 12 days, man. It's going to be maybe, maybe your Tigers are for some reason in buy mode, and you can just you can win seven games, uh, you know, by season's end. That'd be nice. So. No, I think uh, I think they're they're doing just fine. They've they're developing their talent. <laughs> they don't need to be messing with anything over there. They're kind of starting to gel a little bit. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think our ideas of gel are, are a bit different, but uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, all right, all right. You want to hate on them for a second? I just looked at their stats the other day, and it was yeah, not yeah, that bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to hear how many games they are behind the White Sox in that division. Uh, uh-huh. let's see. I mean, the Yankees are what 47 44 right now. Mm-hmm. The Tigers are 43 and 51. I mean, like, it's not that bad. They're 14 games back, like, they're <laughs> yeah. not in last place. I'll tell you that. They're not, they're yeah. not, in last, they're not the Orioles. You know, they were the Orioles last year. The yeah. Orioles are 30 and 62 right now. Well, I mean, big time moves coming out of Detroit. That it sounds like next season's your year. You're gonna be hunting for that wild card, coming in hot. The Tigers, 2022 baby. Maybe. Comerica wow. Park is gonna be lit. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be so cool. Anyway, so let's move on from the Tigers, and let's talk about and close out with the biggest thing happening in sports right now: NBA Finals. Mm-hmm. And man, I I don't know how how much of the office you've watched, but there's a great quote where Steve Carell goes, Too much. well, well, how the turntables and then just cuts it off there because yeah, can't let this go, man. I know I was wrong on my gentleman suite, but you're, you were a big sons and four guy. And now it looks like it's bucks and six. They're up three, two heading back to Milwaukee close game yesterday, game five in Phoenix, Giannis Middleton, Drew Holiday, Drew Holiday learned how to score again. That was great. 
Yeah. They, they combined for 88 points. They combined for 24 assists. And they had 20. They combined for 20 rebounds. Giannis had 32. Drew Holiday had 27. Chris Middleton had 29. And yeah, I guess so. Milwaukee outscored Phoenix 79 to 53 in the second and third quarters. And Book once again tried to carry the team on his back. Had another 40 point performance, and they couldn't pull through for their guy. Did you watch that game yesterday? What are your, what are your thoughts on on how this series is kind of unfolding? I mean, you know, I still can't believe how well Giannis is playing after what happened to his knee. That's still absolutely yeah. amazing to me that he didn't do any damage and he was just out there doing his thing. And then, you know, Chris Middleton's always been doing his thing, but Drew Halliday kicked into another gear. And finally, man, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, so they're firing on all cylinders and, you know, the Suns were better on turnovers. They actually had less turnovers than the Bucks in game five. But in game four, I think they had 17 turnovers. Um, that ain't going to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't even really want it. You know, so it's just it's just not looking too hot. Um, I don't think they lose in Milwaukee, though. Um, I really don't because – So you think the Suns – They were looking pretty good six. most of that game, and then all of a sudden Milwaukee just came back in the last – you know, they had a great second quarter. I think they had uh, – they outscored them 43-24 to 24 in the second quarter. Um, so, you know, but the Suns outscored them 37-21 in the first quarter. So, it's, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I I was hoping for this series. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I'm glad to see that, you know, we are getting – a full performance from all of the starters of both teams. Yeah. I mean, what Chris Paul had, I think, what was it? 21 and 11, I believe. Yeah. So good for him. I'd still like to see more efficient, more, a little bit more consistency from him in the finals. Hey, dude, it was pretty rad. I was out with one of my buddies yesterday at this bar down the street from my apartment and it's like a pretty big space. And, it was the first time we had been there for really any sort of sporting event. And especially since Oregon reopened on June 30th, and there were probably like, I don't know, people might think this is like bad or whatever. There were like a hundred to 120 people at this bar and it was insane. And it was the first time that it felt like, you know, sports, not only were sports back, but like the finals are here, you know? super yeah. rad to be a part of that and like actually get to experience life again um but yeah that and that dagger Giannis alley-oop was so rad <laughs> and just the you know that was the thing is like the suns got their turnovers down in game five but the untimely turnovers i mean they had a timeout left and they just i mean i know how good devin booker is but you got that timeout you can't take it with you Stop on the other side of half court, set something up, get a little bit of a plan. And, I mean, Devin Booker just rushed the lane, had nowhere to go, turned around, didn't realize Holiday was behind him, strip and alley-oop for a score. I mean, that was I, – I was shocked. My jaw dropped during that yeah. play because I just did not expect Devin Booker to just pull what Chris Paul did the game before and just <laughs> give the ball away in a critical yeah. moment. Um, it's, it's also going to be like – if the Suns lose this final, this finals, it's I don't really know what the outlook is going to be on them, like going forward. Because I don't know how long Chris Paul was there for, and if he's there for even another season, like there's going to kind of be expectations. Well, there will be expectations, but I think it's going to be kind of similar to like how the Bucks had expectations, where every season you expect them to do something, you expect them to do something. I get the feeling that they're going to keep coming up short. I think the Bucks take this series in six. I think they take it at home. And Phoenix is going to be, I I don't know. I don't know. I love Monty Williams. I love their young core. But it, I don't really know how I to feel about them going forward. The key to this is going to be what you said earlier about you want to see more from Chris Paul. And I think Chris Paul wants to see more from Chris Paul. And, yeah. I mean – Chris Paul has to be acutely aware of the clock ticking on his career and how many times he's tried to get this far. And 
I think you see him lay it all on the line and have a career game in in game six. I and, hope so, man. And I, I really so. don't. I really don't think that j- like just because I said Suns and four, it's going to be Suns and seven. <laughs> okay, like it's not going to hey. end in six games. It has to do the exact opposite of what but, I said because that's how it works. So maybe okay. maybe Bucks and seven. Maybe it'll be Bucks and seven. But we're going to a game seven. I just okay. don't see this series get you know it, it can't end. It's too good at this point. It's it's defying all my expectations. It's what the people Every wanted. Of you know, yes, it's what I wanted. Yeah. So I didn't so, think it would happen, but I was hoping. So, so the odds for game six. So the spread is Bucks minus five, and the over under is two twenty two for the game, and a plus on. Money lines plus 75 for Phoenix, minus 210 for Milwaukee. Unexpectedly, well, I don't know if it's unexpectedly. That seems like a heavy favor on the money line. Minus 210 seems, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be closer than, than than the bookies are giving it or the odds makers are giving it. But I think the, the minus five spread, I guess, takes care of that. I don't know how odds work. We discussed this. I don't, I don't know how any of it really works. I have a general idea. But I think minus five is... Pretty, it's pretty accurate. I think it'll be a close game, but the Bucks take it for Cream City, baby. It's gonna happen. Do you know, know why they call it Cream City? Because there's a lot of dairy products produced in Wisconsin. Wrong. I looked this up because one of my buddies hates the Cream City jerseys, and we didn't know why they were called Cream City. So apparently, when Milwaukee was founded, they had like a special type of like material to build to build shit with like buildings and it was like a cream colored brick that was distinct to that area so that's why it's called cream city because of the bricks on their buildings <laughs> wow yeah really it's like the lamest like name and like reason for the name ever yeah yeah, I don't know how like that's more anticlimactic than being like nicknamed Cream City because of dairy, but it somehow is. It is. It really like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, at least like the dairy is like your economy. I don't know. Like they're no like you know you got the cheese heads with the yeah. the with the Packers and you know you got they they got a lot of beer. They're like Michigan. They got a lot of beer there, um, and they got the Brewers. You know, Bucks. Yeah. There's a lot of deer. There's a lot of woods in Wisconsin. A lot of hunters. The Bucks. It makes sense. Unlike the Lakers, who just stole their team from Minnesota, which is the land of a thousand lakes, which is why the Lakers are called the Lakers. And they just kept their name, even though they moved somewhere where, like, I think there's like one lake in the whole state. I don't know. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> there's one drop. There. There's one drop Last of water in there. the entire state. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's not on the fire. There's some water somewhere. But... Uh, it probably is. We just don't know about it. It probably is on fire, and they could use. I thought it was just always on fire. That my in my mind, California just never stops burning. I th- that's probably not incorrect. I, I, I don't know, but it, that's that's my perspective on wait, it. Also, I don't, wrong. I don't think America got their taco. Still, no. I think we're still taco less. Do you know what? This series is kind of starting to piss me off. If I can't, if if I, as an American, I can't enforce my right to a taco, what's what is this all then about? You know, this all- I just, I, I don't, I, I'm starting to get sad. This is ridiculous. This has gone on for too long. You can't tease us with a taco. I mean, you could always just like go to Taco Bell and just stand next to the counter where, like, they put people's orders and, like, mm. you know, and just, like, snatch it really quick and run. Um, so, you get a so, free you can get a free taco that way. So steal and get fined for more money. No, it's taco. not stealing because they said they would give you a free taco and they never lived up to it. So, well, you're just taking what's, what's rightfully yours. Somebody, somebody's going to have to do something to make – this situation right yeah. yeah well they got rid they got rid of the the little uh you know the game when you walked in you would drop a quarter and try to like maneuver the little spinning thing and get it on one of the yeah. panels that was like a different color than all the other ones and like yeah. you know, which one you got it on you could get like a bean burrito 
free taco or like a cinnamon twist. And, you know, they just don't do that anymore. No fun. I don't, I don't understand where, where, I know we just had a lot, we're, we're just coming off of like a lot with COVID and there's been a lot of political unrest and this, all these past election cycles have been crazy, but none of that has quite, you know, pointed me in the direction of this country is going to shit more than the fact that I have yet to receive a free taco because the NBA finals aren't doing it. They're not doing it. Whatever. Whatever. All right. Well, on that note, thanks everyone for listening. That's the end of the show. A short one for you. We'll be back at you on Friday. Friday. So check us out. Thank you again to La Tanique. Check Know Your Balls out on all your socials. Check us out on latinique.news and everything else that Latinique provides. And uh, have a great rest of your week, everyone.